Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. We've been getting these tremendous storms lately. James Hansen wrote a book called Storms of Our Grandchildren. And with abrupt climate change occurring right now, today, we're actually seeing signs of these massive storms. And as we lose Arctic sea ice and snow cover and the jet streams get more and more fractured, we're only going to be looking at more intense storms. When there's no sea ice in the Arctic and the Arctic can warm much more, um, you know, it's warming at, at least, tw well, five to eight times faster than the rest of the planet, the high Arctic. That number two times is very conservative that you hear. We're going to get more and more extreme weather events. So when these extreme weather events happen on coastlines, we get um, all these factors conspiring to wreak havoc on coastlines. And we notice them where our cities are on coastlines, but they're also hap they're happening on all, the, all of the coastlines. And I'm going to talk about how the energy that is in some of these storms. And there's been air, there's areas where there's tremendous movement of boulders along coastlines. And up until now, up until recently, we've thought that it's been tsunami events. So an earthquake generating a tidal wave or a tsunami, move, you know, rearranging a coastline. But it turns out that the energy from large storms is sufficient to move massive boulders along coastlines. So I'm going to talk about some very interesting studies, one in Ireland, one in France. So those are both uh, Atlantic Ocean storm wave action, how it's rearranging coastlines. Um, and also I'm going to talk about um, some another paper on um, an island in the Mediterranean near Italy. So storm, basically storms of our grandchildren are, are storms of our present day. Okay, so let's get right into it. Okay, so this paper here, um, which was just published, just came out 2018, very, very recent. Okay, just in the last uh, week or so talks about extraordinary boulder transport by storm waves west of Ireland. Okay, so there was a whole series of storms in 2013, November 2013 to February 2014, something like that. And the this, fortunately, a, a part of this coastline, a remote part of the Ireland coastline had been documented where the boulders were um, before this time period, and they went back it after in the summer of 2014 after these storms occurred, and they documented the rearrangement of boulders on the coastline, and they got some very surprising information. So they took before and after photos um, of supertidal, so above the tides, coastal boulder deposits (CBDs) in the west of Ireland. So these storms transport in 2013-2014 winter. They transported boulders at elevations up to 29 meters above high water and at inland distances up to 222 meters from the uh, coast. Um, eight, so among the class, these are, this is just a term for clastic, um, this is just rocks basically. There were 18 weighing more than 50 tons that were moved and there were six massive class that exceeded 100 tons. The largest boulder moved and the storms weighed 620 tons. This is phenomenal. Before it was only thought that this type of movement would occur from tidal, fr from tsunamis, not from storms. So this, based on the movement of these um, class rocks, you can get an idea for storm wave energies on coastlines. Okay, um, so they measured the elevation changes of these um, boulders, the distances inland that they were moved, so that you could get the wave energy um, going and how, how much energy was carried by the, the waves, 
by the water moving inland. And they examined how the relationships between um, the mass of the boulder, the size of the boulder, to heights above high water, high water levels. Of course, as you go higher and higher above the, the water level, you get lower and lower um, masses and smaller and smaller rocks being moved, and that gives you an idea of the energy. Um, also, the uh, uh, impacts of the coastal steepness, okay, whether you had a shallow slope up from the ocean or whether you had a cliff, okay, um, how that affected the uh, movement. So basically, the more gentle the topography, the smaller the slope, the larger the boulders that were moved. Um, and they looked at where the boulders came from, where they ended up, and tried to figure out the forces. So the 620 tons, this is, a, this is a, a new maxima or a new record for boulder mass that is transported by storm waves. If you recall, a couple summers ago, I talked about James Hansen's paper on where, where they documented huge boulders being lifted up to high levels, and they attribute it to these superstorms in the past. Um, as a po like basically trains of waves, wave trains with very large periods between them, very large amplitude waves, you know, move, scouring the seafloor, bringing these boulders up to high levels. Um, and I talked in detail about that. I did a series of nine videos on that paper um, from a couple summers ago. Um, so, so what they're saying is that these storms in 2013 to 14, they were strong, but they weren't extreme. There's larger boulders that didn't move on this occasion, but bigger storms, of course, will move even larger boulders. But right now, the record is at 620 tons. So this was uh, fortunate because they had done measurements. Of, they, they, they basically documented what, where, the, where the rocks were along a certain coastline before 2013, they had these series of storms, and then they went and they went afterwards and they saw where all the rocks were and stuff from pictures and documented how far things moved. And uh, so basically, um, when you have large waves surging across a coastal platform, or they go over cliff tops, so you get, you call this, this is called the bore. Okay, and this bore can dislodge, like the, it, the rocks are in layers and it can seek, go underneath and it can break off chunks of rock and it can then transport them. Um, and again, it was thought that it was, that tsunamis were required, um, but that's been controversial. Um, and that's clearly not the case now. So let's look at the pictures here. Okay, so this is the coastline. Um, this is part of Iceland, Ireland. I'll show you where it is on a map. But this is, these are people here. These are adults. These aren't kids or anything. These are fully grown adults. So adult heights, you know, a couple meters here. Um, and these are a couple of the rock deposits, these huge boulders. So this is, um, to give you an idea of the scale, this is about 30 or 40 meters here. This is a rock. This is, so you have these cliffs above high water um, and you get a boulder ridge here, okay? A ridge of all of these boulders as rock is being torn off and then transported up and deposited, um, okay? Um, and uh, here you go. So these rocks were moved basically in this 2013-2014 season. Okay, so the next image here, so that's one type of coastline with a cliff. This is another type of coastline here, where, where here you see the rock debris pile here, um, and you see people here and here, and this is the, these rocks are actually moved um, by the storm, and I'll discuss the details um, from this paper here. Okay, so we don't have a lot of data on this. This is a remote area. So we know, um, so if you look at the, at the models of wave action, it, 
didn't it wasn't believed that they would have enough energy the waves from this storm to move these rocks and these rocks actually move during this storm so the models they don't account for the nonlinear forces that build up um, with the wave action okay there's very few direct observations um, so some people have argued that um, large boulders have stayed in place for hundreds or thousands of years okay and that these ridges haven't moved recently or even in the last few centuries so this um, th th so this season this winter season of, of large storm action was a perfect opportunity um, and once it happened they rapidly went out in the field to see you know what happened to the to the boulders okay so so this is a schematic here of some of the different types of of, of formations that you see of, of these coastal boulder deposits okay boulder ridges these are the ridges here they can form from 1 to 50 meters above high water they're built of these classer rocks ranging in size from fine pebbles to medium blocks um, and then you can have these isolated platform boulders here and these are generally much larger than the rock sizes in here and then you can have a some rock detached from the cliff and you can have these massive blocks of cliff detachment blocks okay so they basically the wave action can go into weaknesses in the rock and the whole thing can just drop off and detach um, be, due to due to the force of gravity okay so that's the type of um, situation that we get these boulder ridges here isolated boulders here which are much heavier and the heaviest being the cliff detachment blocks okay so these things occur worldwide on high energy coastlines okay that are exposed to the open ocean generally you know you've got very you know cliffs here then the water depth will increase you know quickly here so you got deep water you can get very high rolling waves during storms large fetches large winds large, huge waves and we'll talk about uh, what wave size is required to, to move these things okay so so this is just okay so let's go um, so let's keep going here and so so there's a number of different questions here um, okay and you can look up this paper yourself how often do the boulders move okay it's an open question okay the biggest boulders can sit unmoved for decades and maybe even centuries um, they occur they're usually along we're talking about desolate coastlines people don't build structures there they don't spend much time there um, the transport's generally unrecorded we don't know okay so this study is sort of an exceptional study where where remote area is looked at as as are the other couple studies i'll talk about so the idea is storms or tsunamis okay there's some interesting historical observations that storm waves create and transport boulders weighing many tons okay so here we go here 1839 okay um there was the late memorable storm hurled the waves in mountains over these high cliffs and cast rocks of amazing size over the lower ones to the east of them okay and here in the winter of 1802 a, a, a rock uh, tabular shaped mass eight feet two inches by seven feet five feet thick was dislodged from its bed and moved a distance of 80 to 90 feet okay this is recorded in 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 storms not from tsunamis uh, but there hasn't been many studies done in most of the 20th century so you know as climate change is proceeding and we're getting more and more in intense storms interest has there's been more interest generated as to actually how much energy is in these waves what how can they re, uh, reconfigure coastlines you know this is very relevant to um, coastlines where we build structures so I'll continue